Dr. Christian Frisch is R&D manager at Biorad and has led the antibody generation group since 2003. He studied molecular biology in Göttingen, Germany, and did his PhD with Professor Alan Furst at the University of Cambridge, UK, working on the energetics of protein-protein interactions and protein folding. In 1997, he joined Morphosis, working on the development of display technologies and the generation of antibody phage display libraries. His group has generated more than 40,000 antibodies for custom projects. Now over to you, Christian. Thanks, Amanda, and hello from me as well. My presentation will be about the generation of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies in multiple formats within four weeks. I will start my presentation with an overview on the challenges customers are facing when sourcing custom antibody reagents. I will then briefly describe how we at BioRed generate recombinant antibodies using Hucal technology, followed by a detailed report on the fast track generation of anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. I will also introduce you to our latest technology, SpyTech, and how it is incorporated into our processes to enable format switching and conjugation of antibodies in less than one hour. And finally, I will provide data on the characterization and use of the anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. The major challenges in sourcing custom antibody reagents are listed here. For many customers, it is very important to get such reagents quickly. Um, the development of custom antibodies using traditional animal immunization methods can take six to nine months, and it may not result in the most suitable products. And in unusual circumstances, such as now during a pandemic, the ability to react quickly and reduce lead times um, for the development of diagnostic tests, vaccines, and uh, therapies, this can make a huge difference to outcomes. Reagents should, of course, have the desired specificity and affinity, and they should work in a particular application or in different applications. The format of the antibody should fit the assay. For example, for some assays, antibodies should not have an FC part. Uh, so working with only one format of antibody could restrict the ability to design and optimize the most sensitive and robust assay. And last but not least, it is important to have a sustainable and reproducible supply of critical antibody reagents. In my talk, I will address the solutions that uh, Biorad has um, for all of these challenges. And uh, I now come to the first uh, poll question for you, actually. Um, namely, which of these are the biggest challenges that you face when generating custom antibodies? Um, please uh, select all that apply. So is it uh, timeline is too long, specificity not achieved, affinity too low, um, and so on. Um, so please uh, select the answers that are most appropriate. Uh, uh, then uh, scroll down and uh, click on Submit. I will give you a few more questions. So a few more seconds, I mean. Um, answers are already coming in. Okay, now let's see uh, what the what the results are. Um, so actually, most of you think, uh, or that's the the uh, biggest uh, challenge, that the timeline is too long. But um, um, also, uh, many of the other challenges uh, also uh, apply to you. So um, I hope I can address all of them and that you see that, that Biorad is, is, is able to uh, find answers for all of these challenges. Let me now introduce you to our core technology. We use a recombinant antibody library in the FAB format, which is called Hucal Platinum. Hucal stands for Human Combinatorial Antibody Library. It was made by gene synthesis, so it is not restricted by a tolerance mechanism. There are seven VH and six VL master genes which cover the structural and um, 
which cover the structural and the sequence diversity of the human immune repertoire. A modular gene design was used for library generation and high quality trinucleotide CDR cassettes were used for diversification of all six CDRs. It is a very large library um, containing 45 uh, billion functional human antibodies. The antibody sequence and the codon usage was optimized for E. coli expression so that we routinely achieve good expression um, of all FAB antibodies. The modular design of the library also allows straightforward affinity maturation uh, using pre-made trinucleotide cassettes. For selection of antibodies from the library, we use phage display. This technology is around for more than 30 years now and the inventors of phage display of peptides and antibodies, uh, George Smith and Sir Gregory Winter, have been awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in uh, 2018. Phage display is a very robust technology and ideally suited for enrichment of binding molecules from large libraries, since the phenotype and the genotype are physically linked. E. coli cells are transformed with phage-MIT that, en that encodes a FAB antibody and also encodes the phage minor code protein P3. After infection with helper phage, which provides all the other phage proteins, each bacteria produces recombinant phage displaying FAB on the surface. And the corresponding antibody genes are packaged inside the phage. Antibody generation is done in vitro, so you have uh, full control over the selection process. The antigen is incubated with a Hucal phage library, and uh, three consecutive rounds of phage display guided selection are performed. The antigens can basically be anything uh, that can be mobilized, can be proteins, peptides, toxins, uh, chemical compounds that are conjugated to carrier protein, but also viruses, DNA, or even whole cells. And guided selection means you can um, uh, add blocking reagents uh, to your uh, antibody library in solution to avoid binding to certain proteins, for example. After the third round of penning, the whole pool of FAB genes is cloned into an expression vector. E. coli cells are transformed with a ligation and single colonies are picked into a 384 well plate, which is then kept at minus 80 degrees Celsius. A daughter plate is made for expression of FAPs and screening is performed also in 384 well format using the E. coli lysates of the expression cultures. Um, hits from screening are sequenced and Unique antibodies are expressed, purified, and tested in ELISA or other assays. The entire process takes eight weeks, and this was our promise since the beginning, almost 20 years ago. Using this well-established uh, process, which also includes a lot of uh, automated procedures, uh, we have generated almost 50,000 different antibodies already. And here's another uh, question to you. Um, which technologies do you typically use for custom antibody generation? Please again, um, select all that apply and then uh, click on the submit button. Again, a few more seconds here. So is it more polyclonals or monoclonals or any of these uh, non-antibody alternative binders. Now there's answers coming in. Okay, I think let's see the results. Okay, so quite a diversity, and uh, most of you uh, use uh, uh, mouse uh, monoclonals, but there's also quite a few already that, that use uh, antibodies from phage display. So good for us. Um, so generation of antibodies in just weeks is considered fast compared to the six to nine months using traditional immunization methods. But, but now, of course, in a pandemic situation, there is a different perception. Vaccines have been developed in record time, 
and also reagents for COVID test kits were needed very fast. Uh, so early in 2020, our colleagues from the diagnostic division contacted us with an urgent request for anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibodies for diagnostic kit development. The antibody should bind the nucleocapsid or N protein, and they should be used as control in a COVID-19 antibody assay in the formats human IgG1, IgA, and IgM. Uh, there were also additional requests from other group at uh, BioRat for antibodies against the spike protein, so against S1 and S2, and also against the receptor binding domain of the spike protein. In our standard eight-week process, uh, work is done within normal working hours, so from Monday to Friday only. In order to speed up the process for generation of the anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibody, uh, work was done at weekends as well, and the clones from this project were treated with priority at all steps, like sequencing and production of antibodies. Um, so with this in vitro process, you can, of course, do that. Um, I mean, if you inject animals, then you have to wait for the animal to make the antibodies for you. Um, but here uh, we can work basically um, seven days a week um, to really make it much quicker. And this made it possible to significantly shorten the timeline to only four weeks from antigen receipt to shipment of purified and tested antibodies. What we have also incorporated in the process is a technology which enables us to switch the format within one hour and provide, uh, for example, the same antibody as monovalent FAP and an IG, uh, IgG1-like format at the same time. We call this modular antibody assembly platform trailblazer antibodies. Our output after phage display selection is still the FAP format. But for example, the SARS-CoV-2 control antibody must be in IgG format since detection in the assay is via NTFC antibody. I will explain in the next few slides how we integrated Spitex by catcher protein ligation into our processes and can now convert FAP into an IG, IgG-like format into one hour, uh, in, in, in only one hour. The Spitex technology is based on the fibronectin binding protein from Streptococcus pyogenes. This small protein contains an intra-chain isopeptide bond between the side chain of lysine 31 and aspartic acid 117, and this bond forms spontaneously. Moreover, the isopeptide bond is also formed when the protein is split into a small peptide containing the aspartic acid and the remaining protein containing the lysine. So you simply need to add protein fragment and peptide uh, to receive your covalently linked product. The protein fragment is called uh, spike catcher. It has a size of only 12 kilodalton and does not contain cysteines. The peptide is called spy tag. Uh, the version two is 14 amino acids long and it spontaneously reacts with a spike catcher. Um, also, if it is attached to a protein at the N or C terminus or also uh, internal. The isopeptide bond formation is irreversible, and it is a fast and quantitative reaction, which is very robust. It works at a wide pH and temperature range in all kinds of buffers. It is also robust to detergents and uh, even occurs inside cells. You don't need purified protein. So Spitex spy catcher technology is a fast and easy way to ligate proteins, both in vivo and in vitro. We have uh, attached the spy tag at the C terminus of the FD chain of our FABs um, and have also flag tag and his tag in this example at the C terminus of the FD chain. And um, we can couple this now with a set of different spy catcher molecules uh, to generate all kinds of different formats. A few examples uh, you see here. Um, you can use uh, the unlabeled monovalent FAB as it is, obviously, for example, for affinity measurements. You can add additional tags by ligation to a catcher molecule that is containing such tags. 
We have pre-produced catchers with different labels attached to it, such as HRP and biotin. So by ligation to these catchers, you get immediately a labeled antibody. If you need higher avidity, the FAP can be conjugated to a bicatcher, which are two catcher molecules connected by a peptide linker. This results in a bivalent FAP, and of course, also these bicatchers can be labeled. Another great format is uh, the, uh, synthetic IgG or Ig-like format. Uh, here we fuse the catcher to the FC part of an antibody. So after fusion to the f uh, of, the, of the FAP to this FC catcher, you have an IgG-like molecule. And of course, there are also labeled versions for this format. So you only need to produce your antibody in FAP format once and then you have access to all these different formats, which can be made in a one hour reaction. You simply mix FAP and catcher, incubate at room temperature, and it's done. If you want to know more um, details about these, this technology, I recommend to read our publication from this year in Cell Chemical Biology. The spy catcher protein does not contain cysteines, and so it was possible to introduce cysteines at well accessible positions, which can be used to label the spy catcher site specifically via uh, malayamid chemistry, um, and then put any labels on it. Labels are shown here as orange circles, just as an example. Uh, we have done that for the catcher, where we introduced one cysteine, and also for the by catcher. Uh, with one version with three cysteines and one with one cysteine. Uh, so this way we achieved a fixed degree of labeling and a high batch-to-batch -batch consistency. You can also be sure that functionality of the antibody will not be compromised by the labeling uh, since the antibody itself is not modified. On this gel, you can see how fast the coupling reaction between spy-tagged FAB and, in this case, FC catcher occurs. In the first lane, we ran the FAB. The lower band is the light chain and the band above the FD chain containing the spy tag. In the next lane is the human IgG1 FC catcher. So these are the, um, um, the uh, things we mix together. Uh, at uh, the, a ratio FAP to FC catcher of 2.5 to 1, so an excess of FAP, and then we incubate it at room, temp uh, room temperature. At the, there's time points indicated above the, the, the gel, and at these time points, a sample was removed, and then the reaction was stopped. And so you can see already after 30 seconds, two new bands appear. Uh, which run at a higher molecular weight than the non-coupled FC catcher. The lower one is the FC catcher coupled to one FAP, and the upper one is the one we are interested in, the FC uh, catcher coupled to two FAPs, which is our IgG-like format. All FC catcher reacted to this final product already after 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, we still recommend to incubate for one hour uh, just to ensure that reaction is really complete. The performance of the, uh, these synthetic IgGs is comparable to normal IgG. We have shown this for many antibodies and uh, in different assays. Here's an example of an anti-GFP antibody, uh, which was produced both as human IgG1 and as FAP, which was then coupled to FC catcher to generate this IgG1-like antibody. So for the assay, GFP was coated, and the antibody either in IgG or IgG1-like form, it was titrated, followed by detection with an HRP-labeled anti-FC secondary antibody. You can see that the resulting titration curves are almost identical, so the uh, two formats uh, behave really very similar. I would now like to describe our fast-track antibody generation against the SARS-CoV-2 nucleocapsid protein in more detail. We performed two selection strategies, or uh, pannings as we call it. In the first approach, a solid phase panning, the protein was immobilized by coating, and in the second strategy, biotinylated nucleocapsid protein was captured either by streptavidine or neutravidine in the different panning rounds. 
we still needed only less than half a milligram of protein for this entire process. In both cases, the library was blocked with 10% human serum to avoid selection of antibodies which are cross-reactive uh, cross uh, with uh, serum proteins. From each panning, 386 clones were screened in ELISA on the nucleocapsid protein and on a control protein. And from both approaches, we got many hits and the diversity was very good. For, uh, so from a total of 50 clones that we, uh, that we sequenced, 38 were unique. These uh, 38 antibodies in monovalent FAB format, equipped with uh, SpyTech and HisTech, were produced in E. coli, and then affinity purification was using uh, the HisTech. They were then ligated to human IgG1 FC catchers and uh, tested in, in, in several ELISA assays. And all this work, as I said, was done within four weeks uh, after antigen received. In one of the ELISA assays, the antibodies in the IgG1-like format were tested on the pre-coated plates that are used in the Platelia SARS-CoV-2 total antibody assay kit to make sure that our antibodies perform well in this final setting. N-protein or control protein is coated. IgG1-like antibody is, is, is added and detection was via an HRP-labeled anti-FC secondary antibody. Um, all but one clone show very good and specific binding to the coated N protein. We also me measured the uh, uh, affinities of the 10 antibodies which performed best in indirect and in sandwich ELISA. So for this, biotinylated N protein was captured by strapped avidin immobilized on sensor, and the binding of monovalent FAB to the N protein was measured. Um, six of the antibodies have monovalent affinities in the single-digit nanomolar range. The antibodies were further characterized by our colleagues from the diagnostic division. So antibodies in IgG1-like format were tested in, a, uh, in the final assay, which is a one-step sandwich ELISA setting using the Platelia SARS-CoV-2 total antibody assay protocol. And uh, if uh, one ELISA, if, 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 if one arm of the IgG um, binds to a mobilized N protein and the other arm to HRP labeled N protein, then in this ELISA you get a signal. Uh, all clones work in the assay, uh, as you see here, uh, and some show a very good sensitivity um, at, at really low concentrations, there's still uh, binding. The three best candidates were converted into full-length human IgG1, IgA1, and IgM format for use as positive control for the respective format. All converted antibodies were produced in mammalian cells, and uh, as shown here, all work well in, in ELISA. All three antibodies give high signals in sandwich ELISA at a concentration below one microgram per milliliter, uh, and for comparison, the rabbit polyclonal serum that was used uh, um, uh, or had to be used at 10 microgram per milliliter. As expected from the selection strategy, uh, the antibodies perform well in human serum and uh, in synthetic matrix. Four of uh, our antibodies against the different SARS-CoV-2 antigens will be used as calibrators in Bioplex 2200 SARS-CoV-2 IG panels. Um, which are highly specific multiplex IgG, IgA, and IgM serology assays um, for the different uh, COVID proteins, uh, receptor binding domain, S1, S2, and uh, N antigens. For these assays, the four recombinant virus proteins are coupled to four differently colored beads, as you see on the right side. Um, then patient sample is, is added to the mix of the beads and bound antibodies are detected with an isotype specific PE labeled antibody. Uh, this way it can be analyzed in a single assay if the patient has developed antibodies against the virus and to which, to which uh, viral proteins. It was also shown that our anti-N protein antibodies can be used for lateral flow rapid diagnostic uh, antigen test assays. 
I would now like to summarize the advantages of our Trailblazer antibodies. The coupling of spy-tagged fabs to different spy catchers enables fast and robust labeling of antibodies, and it provides access to bivalent fabs or IgG-like antibodies within one hour. You can also easily switch species and isotype of the antibodies. Uh, we have FC catchers with mouse and rabbit FC sequence, uh, also, so these Ig-like antibodies can be detected with anti-mouse or anti-rabbit FC secondary antibodies, and uh, you do not have to change an established protocol. You can still use your favorite secondary antibody. We also offer FC catchers for the different human IgG subclasses, so IgG1, 2, 3, and 4, as well as human IgA. The coupled antibodies show similar or better performance than corresponding control in various assays. We've tested, uh, for example, ELISA, Western blot, flow cytometry, and immune fluorescence. In all assays, uh, the Trailblazer antibodies showed excellent performance. With the site specifically labeled catches, um, you get a defined product with a fixed degree of labeling and also a high batch-to-batch -batch consistency, and there is no modification of the antibody binding site. So one production batch of spy tagged FAB gives you access to a multitude of formats. You can use the antibody, for example, coupled to HRP-labeled bycatcher in Western blot, and coupled to rabbit FC catcher together with anti-rabbit FC and immune fluorescence assay, or of course the, the monovalent FAB for affinity determination. Uh, the coupling is scalable, so you can first test with only a few microliters, just sufficient for the assay. Or if you want, you can directly label the whole batch, or you can, as I said, label or a couple uh, different catchers. The catchers can be ordered as catalog product, um, so you can perform the coupling yourself. It's very easy, as I uh, explained, um, but we can also do the coupling for you if you want. So in the beginning, I talked about the major challenges in sourcing custom antibody reagents. And now I would like to summarize the solutions BioRed provides. The first challenge was the timeline. We can provide highly specific antibodies very fast in just four weeks using our recently launched fast track service. Or in eight weeks, which is still fast compared to traditional methods uh, for our standard antibody generation service. It's an in vitro process, there is no immunization of animals, and you therefore have full control over the selection. Our Trailblazer antibody platform enables you to switch between a multitude of formats, monovalent, bivalent, and Ig-like, and allows fast and easy labeling using catches, which are site-specifically conjugated, and provide a consistent degree of labeling. There's also reproducible long-term supply of our antibodies. The antibodies are recombinant. The antibody sequence is known, so you basically cannot lose a clone. And we produce either an E. coli for the FAPs or a uh, human cell line um, for IgGs and FC catchers. Now I have a final poll question for you, uh, and that is, um, which of the topics described in the presentation um, was or is of most of interest to you? So is it the four weeks antibody generation, the antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 or multiple formats or the site-directed conjugation? Again, select the most appropriate answers for you and then click on submit. I will give a few more seconds. Okay, so um, the antibodies in four weeks is actually the most important. That is nice because that was the major topic of the talk. Um, but there is uh, also interest uh, um, in the other points, the antibody generation against SARS-CoV-2 and the multiple formats um, and our spy technology, so which, which uh, is already, uh, also very, very nice to hear.
Okay, so um, now if you want to know more about our services and in particular Trailblazer antibodies, please visit our website. And that leaves me with thanking you for your attention.